start to a brand new scape. I'm going to be using my Mr. Aqua 12 gallon long and from my last Aquascape and this Aquascape is going to be all Tropica Prada. I really like Tropica because they're really, really, really user friendly. They even have an entire app and tells you day by day what you need to do. The basis of this series is that every day that the app tells you to do maintenance, I'm going to shoot it and I'm going to show you guys exactly what I do and exactly what it's telling you to do. I'm going to give you tips on how to do it well and even touch on some failures and how to get around them. I'm also going to be using this little handy app called Aquarium Note. Now it's only available for Android and it's not available for iOS, but it's a really handy app for giving you notifications for when you need to do things, for keeping track of your aquarium, the livestock, the parameters, the equipment that you have, what it's costed you. It even has some built-in calculations and tools that you can use to help you figure things out in your planted aquarium. First I'm going to start by escaping the tank for you, adding the soil, the rocks, and the wood, and then I'm going to plant it, fill it, and we'll start from there. So I started by filling the aquarium with a little bit of lava rock. This is going to help you maintain a better slope without having to use so much aqua soil. When you're pouring in your aqua soil, some people like to pour it in the specific areas in which they believe they're going to need more soil. But as long as you pour in enough soil, after you can smooth it out with your hand and grab clumps and put them in other areas where you're going to need more. So don't be so worried when you're pouring in your aquarium soil that you're not getting as much in other areas that you are in the areas that you need it. You also don't have to be worried about having an exact scape in mind and specific layout when pouring in the soil. This is most of my hardscape. I like to keep it in a Rubbermaid bin so it's all in one place. I'll put most of my wood in there, twigs, branches, all of my rocks in the smaller ones. I like to lay them out before I get started. I want to make it clear that this is not the final scape. I just wanted to show you this because this is actually a very important part of the process. It's important to just get something in the tank, get some rocks and some wood in there in ways that you might think it looks best. Then take a night and sleep on it. Come back to it in the morning and see if any parts really stick out to you as something that you didn't really intend in your original process. Now that I have it all taken apart, I like to grab an extra jug full of soil so that I can put it in specific places after I'm done completing the scape. everything together, I made sure the smaller and thinner branches were boiled. This allows them to become waterlogged and not float. I then used some flourish glue by Seachem to glue the branches and roots to the rocks so that they don't get moved by fish or by myself. 
it's a good idea to buy some spiderwood or manzanita, anything with very thin branches, and use them for roots. Finish off the hardscape by sprinkling the aqua soil that I put aside in between rocks or piled up at the back. It gives it a more natural look the way the soil falls. Here I'm just sprinkling some soil in between the rocks using a teaspoon. Try not to use your good utensils for this. I'm placing some more soil here so that I can plant some crypt parva between the rocks. Now we can plant. This is Eleocarus acicularis. You start by taking the cardboard off and then the plastic lid and give her a little bit of loving. Even though there's no more gel, I still like to rinse off the growth formula. You can then pull it apart into a couple of sections, or even use scissors to make smaller sections. You can then just use your fingers to pull them apart and make smaller plugs. The smaller the plug, the better. The more plugs you have, the more area you'll be able to cover, and the faster your carpet will grow in. Let me just take some time to tell you a little bit about Eleocarus acicularis mini. You may know it better by its common name, dwarf hair grass. It's very similar to Eleocaris pergula, except it usually grows a little shorter. It's not really considered the fastest grower, but it's also not the slowest. I'd say a little slower than Parvula. It's of course a foreground carpeting plant with a need of added CO2 and some decent lighting if you want that nice fresh Sunday morning lawn. Shout out to Tom Barr for bringing this plant to Tropica. So what you're seeing here is two full tissue culture cups from Tropica, all pulled apart into multiple plugs to make it as easy as possible for planting. So now I'll add a little bit of water just to make it easier to plant it. I like to put down a paper towel to obstruct the flow of the water that you're adding and not disturb the soil, as well as pour it through a red spaghetti strainer, just like George Farmer does to obstruct the flow and let it land softly on the soil. That way you're not blowing aqua soil everywhere. So when you're done, it's time to pull up the paper towel. Just make sure to do so gently as to not create a current in the water and move all the soil. And now, we plant. When planting any species of hair grass, you will plant them in the formation of a five. Five on a die, five on some playing cards, you get the idea. Doing so decreases the amount of distance between each node, between each plantlet that you planted. So when you're trying to create a carpet, this decreases the amount of room that it has to grow to fill in. Versicularia ferii, pretty much just known as weeping moss because the Latin name is way too hard to pronounce. The moss is pretty much just like every other tissue culture cup. You take it out, rip apart some sections, but with these you put them into some clumps so that you're able to glue them on to whatever it is that you want to glue them on. I'll be using the Flourish glue by Seachem to glue the moss onto the wood. If you've never used the fluorite glue, to glue any type of plant onto anything, it's pretty easy to use. You just apply a small amount to whatever it is that you're sticking to. In this case, I applied the glue directly to the wood, and then I put the moss on top of the glue and I patted it down a little bit. I don't know whether you should be using it directly with your skin, but after I was all done, I had some white residue on my thumb, and it just ended up peeling off over time. And 
now it's time for the Rotala Rotunda Folia. You take the cardboard off, you peel the top off, you dip it in some water, wash off the growth liquid, same thing with all of the other ones. You do the same thing by pulling it apart into separate clumps, and just because it's a stem plant doesn't mean you have to plant it stem by stem. So much comes in these cups, I was so blown away that I only needed one cup. I even planted them in some pretty dense plugs, and they went a long way. But because I'm planting the Rotala in the back, I need to add a little bit more to get the water level up there so that I'm actually planting in it, and not just in the wet soil. Again, I add some paper towel, my red spaghetti strainer, and I add the water to it to not disturb the soil and even the hair grass that I just planted. Now the planting of the Rotala is exactly like the hair grass, you put it in your tweezers and you put it right down into the soil. Don't worry about the bottom leaves, they'll rot off in the first couple weeks and roots will grow from the nodes in which there were previously leaves. Next is Cryptocorion Parva. It's a little different from the other ones because it comes in rock wool, but it's really easy to take apart. You just grab a hold of the middle and pull the two sides apart. You should only have one side attached now. Grab a hold of the leaves and then gently take the rock wool away. You may have some rock wool left on the roots. You can take a pair of tweezers and scratch away some of the rock wool. Then we just do as we did with all of the other plants and propagate it. You should see little nodes towards the middle of the roots in which you can pull away the plants to create about three or four leaf plantlets. After you're done planting, it's time to fill. Again, I'll put down some paper towel to stop the water from destroying the hair grass in the soil and just pour it straight into a pasta strainer. And ladies and gentlemen, that is it. That is the tank fully escaped and planted and filled. I just want to thank you guys for sticking to the end of this really long video and I promise you the rest of them won't be this long. I hope I helped anyone who is interested in the steps of aquascaping a tank. As I mentioned before, this tank is an experiment to see how well Tropica's app can help you start your planet tank. This means there will be a new video in 3 days, showing you what there is to do on day 3. If anyone has any questions during the video or after about anything to do with this tank, leave a comment below and I will definitely answer it for you. If you want to see how this tank progresses under the Tropica app, subscribe to the YouTube channel to stay updated. Also, you can like my Facebook page for behind the scenes stuff and what I'm up to. Again, thank you guys and you'll see me in three days.